Welcome back to the channel folks and to another 28mm painting tutorial. The subject is 100 years wars infantry. Fairly generic infantry, not based on any particular heraldry. These particular minis are by Claymore Castings and they're very dramatic minis. They've got a real sense of movement in a lot of these figures. They're well sculpted, they're well cast, some great detail in there so they're a great subject for a tutorial. These were painted as part of a commission. We're more known for painting Flames of War commissions but we do the full range really in the wargaming world so if you're interested get in touch at the email address on screen now. Anyway, let's get painting. If you're familiar with my tutorials, you'll know that I use a layering approach where I paint up from a dark base. Now for non-metallic areas or areas that are not black or blue or grey, I always use German Camo Black Brown as that dark base colour. I'll be using the black or German Camo Black Brown as an internal shade or an external shade. Most commonly the latter and by that I mean it's going to be a little bit of shade colour, a small line and it's got to be carefully managed so it's not too big between for instance the end of a sleeve and where it meets the hand or if the arm is against the body the join between the body and the arm, the neck and the top of the tunic and so on so that we're framing all the elements of the figure. On a figure of this scale, I don't use the base colour as an internal shade very much and by internal shade I mean for instance the shade in the folds of sleeves, tunics, trousers and so on. But it is appropriate to do it sometimes, especially on smaller items or for instance where the main colour is quite a dark brown already or perhaps um, a dark grey colour. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is for the first colour that I'm applying, I'm going to go through it in detail to explain the layering process and then subsequently I'm just going to go through the colours, let you see how I'm applying them but not talk so much in detail about how I'm applying them as we're going to cover that now. You'll have seen from the introduction that I've got a very very bright finish but things look very very dark just now. So don't be put off by how dark things are just now, we're going to work through it layer things up, use that shade to frame the figure, to give it definition and depth. There's not going to be all these dark shades left by the time we're finished. What I'm doing here is applying a shade coat onto leggings and the kills. I'll be using a lot of different colours for those areas but I'm going to show you this particular set here and I'm starting with flat earth. Now there are some really deep areas of shading around the head there, I'm going to leave them in so that it's going to disappear into darkness around where the, the, the helmet basically shades everything. But for the leggings, I'm only going to leave a little bit, tiny little bit of the German Camo Black Brown as an internal shade on the folds near the bottom. But you'll note that I'm leaving a line, very thin line, around the flat earth to frame all the different elements. It's important to remember that you're not going to get a smooth coat of paint down in one pass unless it's a very small area of the figure. So we're going to be building up each layer with multiple coats. So there's going to be two coats on this first shade colour, that's the flat earth, and then the subsequent colour is going to be two coats. And each time the first coat maps out the area, the second coat defines the area, in particular getting rid of excess shade. So that's our shade colour down. We're now going to add the main colour and I'm going to be using in this case Panzerace's New Wood. In the first pass here I'm going to be mapping things out. So for instance on the trousers, the musculature is the most important thing here that is going to tell me where to paint my... and you know folks what I'm doing here is really just painting in lines and blocks in the first pass. That is the map and then we define that map as you'll see in the second pass to get the final shape. The cowl here is a lot trickier than the flatter areas of the trousers so just be careful that you're putting nice controlled lines in and the paint is not too wet. You don't want it flowing down 
towards the shade you want to keep it up at the higher points just now. Now that we have the map created, we're going to go in with a second coat. This not only gives us a nice opaque layer, because remember we're doing a solid layering approach here folks, but it also allows us to work on the map that we've created in the first pass to really define the shapes that we're after, the shapes that we're seeing on the miniature, or for flatter areas, the shapes that we want to create to add the depth to the miniature. We're ready for the highlight. But remember folks, to this point we have the external shade, which is German Camel Black Brown. We've left some of it internal here because we're painting a brown. We've then put the main shade colour down, which is Flat Earth, then the main layer, which is New Wood. Now we're on to the highlight, and just as we really want to control the German Camel Black Brown, the deepest shade, we really want to control the highlight colour here. Too much will put everything out of balance. I'm using German Camel Orange Ochre here. It's quite a yellowish colour. It's quite a strong, distinctive highlight on this. So that makes it even more important that we don't overdo it. When I'm picking my highlights, I tend to go for something which will lighten, but not necessarily brighten. So desaturated kind of colours often work best for this. I'm using a thin brush with a good point. The paint is wet enough to flow off the brush, but thick enough so that it covers in one pass, an opaque line in one pass, a solid line. If it's too wet, it gets all soft, it starts to spread out, and that's not what we're after because we want this line to be thin. And we want to apply it on the flatter areas right beside the shade to create the greatest contrast, but on sort of deeper areas where the folds are quite pronounced, well then we're going to place it on the top of the fold so that catches the light. And that completes our steps, completes our layers. The most important thing to remember at all times is greatest control on the deepest and the lightest colours, mapping out the main colours across the shape of the figure. So let's have a look at another colour I'm using. That's going to be red. My shade colour, my starting point is burnt cadmium red. I'm going to leave no internal shade using the German Camel Black Brown here. The burnt cadmium red is quite dark anyway, but I don't want to have any Jimmy Camel Black Brown internal, so I'm going to be external to help frame the shape once again. The next layer is red. That's what it says on the bottle, folks, it's just red. On the Paddy Dammer here, the map is very clear for where we're going to be painting our red in. Notice there's a few sort of folds and almost like cuts across the bands of the padded armour. We're going to pay attention to that and leave some shade in there too. And then when we go into the other areas like tunics, fabrics, cowls and so on, we're going to map that out in the same way as we did in the full example. Two coats remember people, map and then finish it off. And then on to the highlight and I'm going to be using Scarlet for this. It's quite a subtle highlight against this red, so I'm going to add a small amount of additional highlight, but in the main, Scarlet. And that final highlight colour is just a small amount of orange red. And I just want to pick out like corners of the folds, where there's those creases or cuts in the folds. I'm not going to be highlighting right the way down the edges of tunics edges of the padding or such like because that make this really really bright but a controlled amount is a great sort of focus for the eye. Now we've painted some really bright red padded armour but the colours are normally a lot more muted so let's see what I've done for those. I'm going to use three similar but different palettes of colour but for all of them I've started with a shade coat of US Field Drab. This shade will be the internal shade. Remember, the external shade for this is going to be just a tiny little line of the German Camel Black Brown to define the outlines of the shape, for instance at the belt or where other items touch the padded armour. The first colour I'm showing you is Green Ochre. And the highlight colour is Deck Tan. Once again, a very, very bright highlight, so we've got to be careful how much we use and that we don't overdo it and get it looking too stripy, especially down the sides of all those padded folds. 
next up for a bit more of a deeper colour than the green ochre and that's going to be Japanese uniform and the highlight colour for this is going to be Hiraki sand and the third colour is going to be old wood this is a much less saturated colour than the other two and the highlight again is Iraqi sand for this one now for leather armour I'm using leather brown which makes sense I suppose with a highlight of new wood let's go on to fabrics now there's a lot of blues and whites in the basic heraldry pattern that we've got here so I've marked out the quarters and for the white areas I'm starting with a deep shade coat of London Grey that'll be the deepest internal shade and a little bit of external shade just to help frame things next up is deck tan now deck tan for me is an essential colour for when you're painting white it goes on a lot more easily than white does and forms a good solid base for your subsequent coats of off-white or white you need to be very careful when you're painting with white folks it's a pigment that can really be quite hard to use it can almost like clot together in certain points then look really thin and semi-opaque in other points so you've got to be careful build it up nice and slowly with semi-opaque layers don't try to get it down in one layer that goes for the deck tan too though the deck tan is still easier to use so when it comes to adding the white, everything is good to go. We have got two layers of shade there. The London Grey is going to be the smallest shade and the deck tan is going to be the main shade. Map it out in the same way as we would with any other area of the figure. Come back and give it a second coat to finalise that mapping so you've got everything nice and controlled and sharp. We're applying the same colour to the shield but you can see I'm painting sort of vertical lines going up and down just to add a little bit more visual interest to it maybe look like a fabric stretched over the flat surface I've started the blue with a shade coat of stormy blue now that's from game colour and we're back to model colour for the main coat this is ultramarine and for highlight we're using azul which is a light blue colour for a dirty sort of linen kind of colour I use German camel beige if you want to leave any deep shade within that then I suggest a coat of olive brown rather than the German camel black brown it's still dark but it's not quite so dark and it gives a better transition to the lighter colour I'm going to keep building up the layers here with a coat of medium grey then a highlight of deck tan for the belts and straps I'm going to use two different colours to create leather first one's nice and easy it's a leather brown and then I'm going to use German camel medium brown so I've got two different colours on different straps just to help them stand out against each other I will use new wood as a highlight for the leather brown and orange brown as a highlight for the German camel medium brown I'm going to be painting some green mainly on the cowls here I think it is and because I'm doing that I'm going to replace the German camel black brown with olive brown it's a softer transition and there are some deep areas of shade around the cowl so that will help when I'm building up the green layers the main colour for this is going to be US dark green and then the highlight is going to be just a small amount of green grey green grey is a fantastic colour for highlighting green in all manner of projects folks it gives a lighter edge but not a brighter edge i.e. it's not a very saturated colour that's going to stand out really strongly but you will definitely catch the highlight with your eye Now the hafts and shafts of some of these weapons are very well sculpted other ones in the set are just smooth but these ones are well sculpted so there's a benefit for doing a wash here the sculpting is very very fine so let's put a wash of dark brown over our base coat of old wood 
then using the edge of a brush we can start catching all those high points with some Iraqi sand or for a less saturated greyer kind of finish we can use medium grey. Now for the skin and I always start with a shade coat of saddle brown and then when painting the faces we always start with the eyes. That way we can fix the mistakes that inevitably happen when we're trying to paint that thin line of off white and then that tiny little dot or line of Jimmy Camel Black Brown or similar kind of shade. It's very tricky but you start with a blank canvas you can fix anything that goes wrong. Now the main colour for the skin, there's so many different colours you can use there folks. I'm using Panzerace's Flesh Base, just because I happen to like it. There's so many out there, just use whatever you think works best. When I'm painting the face I'm going to pick out all the features that we as humans focus on to recognise the shape of a face. You can see a face in so many different things. That's because you've got a brow, nose, lips, chin, cheeks. If you can see all of those things clearly on the figure against the shade colour of the saddle brown then you've got a face that people are going to recognise. And the hands are really quite straightforward here folks, you're really just going to pick out the fingers but pay attention to the backs of the hands too, they can be quite prominent so they need to have a discernible shape. More subtle than the fingers but a discernible shape with some shade in there too. With larger areas such as arms and legs, we're going to build up the muscle shape. With a bit of practice this will come quite naturally. You're going to follow the sculpt to a degree but once again there are natural shapes that we will recognise in the human form. If you get that correct on this figure and it makes sense to the eye then it'll make sense to everyone who's looking at it. Then use a light skin colour as a highlight. I can't tell you what colour I've actually used here folks because the bottle's so old the label's not on it anymore. But it's a light skin colour, can't go too far wrong. So when you're highlighting the faces, hit the brows, the bridge of the nose, top lip. Then hit the cheeks underneath the eyes and then a little line down the side of the nose, still on the cheeks and then on the chin. And that's going to accentuate the shape of the face. For the hands I tend just to accentuate the knuckles, so put it highly on the knuckles but then a little more on the backs of the hands. Don't highlight all the way along the fingers or it starts to look a little bit too streaky and less highlighted. And then for the larger areas, legs, arms and so on, just accentuate those muscles. Get highlights on the high points but also on the flatter areas you know, because a leg can be quite rounded, get the highlight directly adjacent to the shade and that will give you the greatest contrast because then you'll go shade to highlight to main colour and that really accentuates the shape. And I'm going to leave things off here folks to keep the video from being too long but the description below has got all the colours used so anything that I have not shown you here should be down there and if it isn't well you've just got to ask a question in the comments and I will get back to you. So hopefully you found this interesting, give you some ideas for how to follow the layering approach, perhaps how to paint your 100 years war infantry yourselves. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the video and you haven't subscribed already please do so and if you hit the bell button that means we'll definitely see you all on the next one.